Is it time to admit that Sammy is the number one goalie in Toronto? We'll discuss that and Toronto's win over Pittsburgh on today's edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On at Least podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Look at the merch on your chest, buddy. Back from WrestleMania, you were in the city of brotherly love. Really quickly, really quickly. How was the weekend, pal? Oh, memorable. Won't forget it. I'll, I'll tell you that. Dude, I like the ending. That whole sequence when everybody and 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 all the legends came out at the end and then Cody finally finished the story. Spoiler for those who plan on going back to watch that cast. Uh, was just incredible, like just emotional for those who kind of, you know, have been following along the story a little bit. Uh, hey, you could tell just everybody within the WWE universe loved, loved the ending. And uh, yeah, I'm super jealous that you were there in person and got to lay eyes on that. Did you get to lay eyes on the eclipse earlier today? What about no, that? Because I, I was driving back, right? So didn't didn't because it was all cloudy in the states like if you were in the states you didn't see it mm, you know what it, it was pretty cloudy here too though it, it it opened up at certain points so you could kind of see what was going on i mean i i personally didn't actually even have glasses so i didn't like go out and watch the thing but it got super dark at one point because we were in what a 99 percent totality uh, path of totality so it did get super dark at one point which was kind of super cool um and and i i may have stuck a quick peek but uh i tried to to not to just you know to save my eyes because apparently they can cause some you know long-term retinal damage don't want that to happen um but yeah no it was, it was pretty cool it was, it was a busy jam-packed kind of day in toronto like you had the Leafs and Penguins with Crosby in town. You had the Jays home opener. You had the Eclipse. You had, you know, WrestleMania last night, Raw after Mania. Like, there's just so much going on. The men's college basketball game tonight, the women's college game on Sunday. Like, the last 48 hours, 24-ish hours have been insane in terms of, like, events, uh, whether it's sporting or world events going on. Uh, you know, it's 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 been a, a wild wild couple of days but um let's get into tonight's game leafs beat the penguins three to two in overtime they almost gave it away they were leading two one pens got back into it they snuck out a point which is very important for the penguins as they're in that playoff run uh but the leafs get the full two what were your big takeaways from this game dave i mean obviously uh if, this is a game where our, a, a team that's desperate right They've been playing a lot of those teams lately, right? The Devils, the Capitals, Flyers. Like they've been playing those teams that are are in this playoff race. So good tests to see how the Leafs stack up against these teams, right? And so, you know, I didn't mind how they played. You know, I know that with Mitch coming back, they're working out some new lines again. So they're they're seeing what works and what doesn't work, and. A lot of good. I like the. There was a lot of things to like. Obviously, Matthew scoring again, Samsonov getting another win. Like a lot of good things are building up here. The only thing I didn't like, uh, two things. One, allowing that goal late in the first period. Like it was a pretty decent period, and then you let that goal, and it's like they've been doing this too much. And it was a goal that didn't need to happen if Ilya Lubushkin doesn't give up a muffin to. The one guy, two guys on the team, you don't give the puck up to number 87 and number 71. Right. 
And so I'm like, really? Out of all guys? And that, yeah. that's been the issue with this team. When they give up the puck, they're swimming. Yeah. But they, yeah, recovered. they did recover, though. I'll give them that. Yeah, and look, I think tonight, um, was it their best effort of the season? No, but I didn't think that they played, you know, horrible. I thought they got themselves into some penalty trouble. I think they took, what, five or six penalties on the night, uh, killed them all off um, as the PK continues to to uh, to succeed here down the stretch, which is a really good thing. But you, you don't want to be taking that many penalties against uh, Crosby and Malkin and uh, Rust and Michael Bunting, who was on their first power play unit, uh, surprisingly. Bunting was all over the place tonight, too. You He wanted so badly to score. He did score when he was here with uh, Carolina earlier in the year, if you recall. Uh, was hoping to do it again tonight with Dubas in the building, uh, but was unable to, to, to do it. And why was that? Well, because Ilya Samsonov was fantastic tonight. Like, to me, that was kind of the big story for the Leafs. Yes, Matthew scoring 65 is is always going to take a lot of the spotlight. But I think Ilya Samsonov uh, was excellent. Like, the Leafs got off to a bit of a slower start. And again, when they got into penalty trouble, your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender. And he was outstanding, uh, especially, you know, you think about the one on Crosby and then, uh, he had another great stop on the power play on on Rust. Um, there was a couple of massive saves that he made to keep the Leafs within the game and then keep the lead uh, at certain times. To me, Ilya Samson, I was locked in, Dave, and I think the performance he put on tonight completely solidified his role as his team's number one heading into the playoffs. I think so. Like at this point, I think you have to, and we and we said at some point. You got to settle in on someone and let them take the reins. Samsonov has done that. He's given you great performances, miracle performances at times, and, you know, building off another impressive win streak for himself personally. And I know people are still going to, and we've talked about this. They they have their, you know, I guess looking past what he did earlier in the year, they're going to ha- always have that in the back of their mind. Yeah. But, Look at who the guy who has the momentum right now, and it's Samsonov. You go with the guy yeah. who's right. You ride the hot hand, and that that hot hand is the one who's uh, probably been one of the more underrated stories for this team this year. Yeah, I mean, you think about the turnaround. He was nominated for the Bill Masterton also uh, on Friday, actually. So, um, you know, and, and that's just the that's the award that goes to somebody overcoming perseverance. And again, you talk yeah. about. You know the, the the mental hurdle he had to overcome to persevere to get himself back into the NHL uh, when he was placed on waivers, went unclaimed, nowhere to go. The team didn't want him to go to the American League because they were worried how fragile he would be if he allowed goals down there. Instead, they said, "Take a week. Let's take a week. Let's reset, and then we'll come back and and see how things go." He's been excellent ever since. He's been one of the top goaltenders in the NHL uh, in terms of goals saved above expected per 60 since coming back too. And uh, tonight, again, a big reason for why the Maple Leafs walk away with a full two points. Who else was a big reason for that? Well, we'll discuss on the other side when we go through our three stars of the game. And uh, tonight was just night one of a back-to-back. You've got another game tomorrow against the Leafs and Devils. Or I guess it's tonight by the time uh, everyone's listening to this podcast. Leafs and Devils tonight, part two of a back-to-back, where I'm sure we'll see Joseph Wool get uh, get himself between the pipes. We'll discuss all that and more coming up on the other side. This is the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Sleeper. Regardless of where you are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because of Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Uh, all you have to do is pick whether studs like Crosby, McKinnon, Malkin, McDavid, Matthews, Marner, whoever will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, 
need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Lee fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are your hosts here for the Locked On Leafs podcast, the daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast. we got new episodes coming out each weekday, Monday through Friday, all the way through until the end of the season. And through the summer as well, we're 365 here. We don't take days off. We don't take a break in the summer. We go all the way through the offseason. So if you want to stay up to date on what's going on with the Toronto Maple Leafs, your favorite hockey club, make sure you are subscribed to us here at the Lockdown Leafs podcast, wherever you get your podcast at, audio-wise and also up on YouTube, where we are within 100 subs of 5,000 and within 100 subs of giving away a Maple Leafs jersey. So, guys, sub up if you haven't yet, and uh, we really want to get there prior to the playoffs so that whoever does win it can get themselves a new jersey to rock come playoff time. Uh, so the Leafs get themselves the victory 3-2 to two in overtime over the Pittsburgh Penguins, an OT winner from Jake McCabe. Not the guy I had on my bingo card for winning a game in overtime for the Maple Leafs, but hey, uh, really nice move decision to jump up and, and, you know, put that thing five hole through Nadelkovich. great feed from Austin Matthews. Um, I'm sure he'll come up at some point in our three stars of the game. Let's get to it. Uh, who's your third star, Dave? Got to go with the penalty kill. Like Leafs don't, Leafs don't win that game. If, uh, the penalty kill doesn't come big as they did, right? You know, yeah. they, they got undisciplined. Five, five. And when, if you're going to be undisciplined like that, the penalty kill is going to have to step up, right? And it's been the one thing that has been a big talking point. Can they get the penalty kill back on track? Kind of wish it didn't take them this long to kind of figure this stuff out. But hey, man, they're doing I, it at the right time. That's it. Right? That's it. They totally have got it done at the right time. In their last, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, they've allowed just one power play goal in their last seven games. So uh, and they're like 19 of the last 20, I think is what I heard on the broadcast. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I could do the math really quicker. And I would add six, nine, 13, 20, 21, 23. Uh, and then however many there is in, in the devil. So like maybe 25, 24, 25 um, straight or not straight, but 24 of 25 or 23 of 24 that they've been able to kill off. Uh, and of course killed off, all five tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that is a... We we talked about things that we needed to see from this team down the stretch. One of those was iron out that PK because things were not looking good for a while. I was making a lot of money on FanDuel just betting power play points, fading this team's PK. Uh, not the best bet currently now because they figured something out and yeah. uh with marner coming back i'm sure he slowly is going to be integrated back into the you know top penalty killing role um but you know that just adds depth because now you already know well doer can kill penalties camp obviously marner uh bobby mcmahon has become a decent penalty killer and you know what you can get a couple of penalty killing minutes out of guys like matthews and nylander too if you want uh, at some point. So yeah, for sure. The penalty kill has been excellent lately and had themselves uh, another big night going five for five. I want to give some love to TJ Brody, you know, like he's a guy who's gotten a lot of hate this season. And uh, you know, for, for a guy who at one point people are saying he should be the odd man out when everyone's healthy the, to the point where people believe he shouldn't even be playing as a top six member of that blue line uh, is wild to me, but he goes out there tonight, 21 minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, he assists on the first goal from the Maple Leafs from Matthew Nyes. Really, really nice play and just a feed easy tap in for Nyes because of the placement there for TJ Brody. Um, and that pairing together, Brody and Giordano didn't allow a single shot on goal at five on five tonight. So they were excellent in their own end as well. So Brody, you know, helping out on both ends of the ice, want to give him some love for uh, for a solid game for him. Uh, nearly 22 minutes of ice time too. So it's not like he was 
uh, you know, insanely sheltered with like 14 minutes. He he played, he played, and uh, got to give him credit for that. Yeah, Second. I really no, I really liked. I I did see that the Leafs had paired Brody and Jordan together, and I was intrigued by that. I said, okay, It'd be nice throwback. See Throw little throwback, back. right? Yeah, because I think Brody had like one of his best offensive seasons playing with Giordano. Geo Geo won the, the North with Brody. That's the year he won the North. Yeah, when Geo so, won the North, Brody was his partner. Right, so it, it's a nice, nice little. Th- I, I just again, I've I've liked Geo's game since he's come back from his injury. I know some people have not cared for it, but I think like they bring something different. Right, a little more just simple. They're playing simple. And I think that's Giordano saying he's got to play simple. Uh, the setup on the nice goal, like that's that's what he needs to do. At times, he might have gone to take that shot on goal, and either won't get through or just it's not a threat. Him passing it, and he's been doing that more often. He did it on a Ma- on one of Matthew's goal last week. That's I think where TJ Brody can excel a little bit more. Maybe he needs to be more of an offensive guy. And not be relied all the time doing things defensively because we know that's that's taken a little bit of a toll on him. Yeah, for sure. But uh, you know, he had a solid night tonight. Hopefully, he can build on it um, against the Devils. All right, your second star, Dave. Uh, my second star, Austin Matthews. <laughs> he's he's shocker. he's gonna make a push. Uh, shocker! Fifty-one goals in his last fifty-five games. Oh man, unbelievable. Like we talk about how it's possible for him to get to 70. Like, look at that. <laughs> yeah, because the guy scores basically every night. I think he scored he scored like five or six. This is like his goal tonight. I believe he's got a goal in six straight now. Five or six straight. Again. Like he, he like when we say he he scores every night, it's not hyperbole. He scores every night. It's insane what this guy's able to do. Uh, he had a, he was a beast out there tonight, uh, once again, and look, (laughs) I don't know if it was the prettiest shot, but Hey, they're not going to ask, you know, how many or or how they're just going to ask you how many. And that's now number 65 on the year for Austin Matthews, which ties Alex Ovechkin's career high of 65, which also ties the most goals ever scored by a player in the cap era. And here's a crazy stat for you, Dave. A crazy one. Um, tonight's was obviously on the power play, so it didn't add to this stat. But Austin Matthews is only two even strength goals away from tying Matt's Sundin for the Leafs record. Do you want to know, know what is insane about that stat, Dave? How many games did Sundin play in a Maple Leaf uniform? Oh. The answer Wait, is nine, not nine hundred and eighty-one. I was going to say it was close to a thousand. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, nine hundred and eighty-one. You know how many games Matthews has played? Half of that. Five hundred and fifty-six, and he's only two away from surpassing or tying Sundin. Three away from surpassing Sundin for uh, most even strength and, goals and, in a Maple Leafs uniform. And Matthews was a goal scorer, too. Like, let's not forget, the guy's ha- had over 500 Sundin. goals in his career. Sundin, yeah. Right? Like, I know that it, he wasn't like he's not Austin Matthews. That's when it comes to his goal scoring ability. But he was up there. During his well, time. Absolutely, he was. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Like, like, that guy was, was you know. Almost automatic when the puck was on his stick. Like. But almost, but Austin Matthews, it, it is automatic yeah. when the puck is on his stick. Uh, he had a big night, had a goal, assisted on the game winner uh, in overtime, uh, registered with uh, with a hit, couple of blocks. That hit was on, uh, well, I'm not sure if this was the registered hit, but he did lay a, a hit on Sidney Crosby when those two had a pretty big collision uh, in the second period. But um, let all forwards with 80% expected goals outshot his opposition six to two while on the ice. The shot attempts were 20 to eight. So like that, that, that top line really is uh, gaining a lot of chemistry and they didn't score tonight, 
but they had a lot of really good chances and a lot of really good looks. Like Bertuzzi had a strong game. I thought Domi played well. Like though that trio, I think Sheldon Keith made the right call uh, when he decided to when they brought back Marner to not break up that you know top trio of Matthews, Domi, and and uh, Bertuzzi. And you know it's only been two games, but they're still playing at a, at a high level, and it's allowed the score and kind of spread out a little bit. And uh, Matthews, again, a beast tonight. He was also my second star, which means we probably also have the same first star of the hockey game, and that would be one Ilya Samsonov, Dave. Yeah, he's deserved it. <laughs> like We heard it a few times at WrestleMania. You deserve it. <laughs> you he's deserve, deserve it. it. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, stopped 30 of 32. Had 2.4 goals saved above expected tonight as well. Uh, most of which was on the penalty kill, actually. He was outstanding tonight when they needed him. Had that unreal save on Crosby. Uh, he just kind of dove and just put his body uh, out in front and ends up getting a stop. Um, and then even like in the second period when they really started getting into the penalty trouble, you know, Sam had to come up with a couple of big saves. There's the one on Rust where... I don't even know if he knew what he was doing. He just kind of flopped back and threw his glove down and, you know, I got a piece of it. Uh, a couple of big stops from Sammy tonight and uh, he only allowed two goals. Uh, if, if this Maple Leafs team can get a two goal performance from their goaltender, they're going to win a lot of games, a lot of games. Yeah. Um, so it was great to see it. And I think Sammy very deserving of the top star tonight. Absolutely. Again, you. I don't think it gets talked about enough how much goaltending can make like in the playoffs. Why does Tampa oh, Bay go on all those runs? It gets talked about a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> but not enough when it comes to Toronto, I think. Uh, like lot Freddie Anderson, there's a lot of chatter. Can Freddie get it done? Every year we talked about that. I don't know. I think like I think was, like last like last year, we talked about Samsonov stealing that series against Tampa. Not many people were talking about that. No, but okay. here, here's the problem. So the goalies haven't been the issue in Toronto. No. It's been the offense. That's why it's been talked about. Because the offense has been the problem. But your point still remains. Right? Like, if you want to go deep in the playoffs, you need... I mean, this least we said they need average goaltending, but if you get above average goaltending consistently, not just in one series, you're going to need a series after series. It mm -hmm. makes such a difference because it puts less pressure on the offense to have to go out and get five goals to win a game. If you say, get us three, get us four. I mean, I, I know at times it has time getting hard time getting two goals in mm -hmm. a game, but you know, if you're not asking for five goals a game, or four goals a game, it makes a difference. That was what was happening earlier in the year. Start of the year. How many times the Leafs have to score five or six goals to win a game because they weren't getting the goaltend. They weren't getting the saves. That wears yeah. on a team. That wears on a team's confidence and, a, and their belief that they can in the goal, the guy in the pipes. Totally. Um, you just said something that I think uh, made me spark a, a thought, I guess, that makes me excited about the proposition of this year's playoffs and maybe why the Maple Leafs are better served this year to have success than they had in years past. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back. I'll tell you my theory. You can let me know what you think. And uh, we'll also tee up tonight's Le Leafs and Devils game as well. Night two of a back-to-back -back going down tonight in Toronto. Uh, I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof rack, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. 
Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. Uh, Leafs and Devils tonight. I assume Joe Wall will get the net uh, again here on night two of a back-to-back. So we'll see if he can have a bounce-back performance um, after the loss to... uh, Was he the Florida game or was he the the Tampa game? Florida. He played the Florida game. No, he he played Tampa. Tampa, yeah. So Tampa won against Florida. Right, right. So the bounce back after the uh, his last outing against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So we'll see what he can do tonight against the Devils. And eh, they're not doing too hot, Dave. They're not doing too hot. Now, mm. they do have a lot of really good pieces. And last time these two teams played, uh, the Devils did win 6-3. to three. But the Leafs have won eight of the last ten meetings. And the Devils, right now, they've lost four of the last five games. It's like they've kind of given up on the season. It feels like. And I mean, when you're you had sky high expectations, there were legitimate Stanley Cup. Like, I won't say ex- expectations to win a cup, but this was a team that was in the midst of teams that could be contenders for a cup at the beginning of the season. A lot of, uh, you know, a darling pick um, to win a cup this year and flamed out, man. They didn't even make the playoffs. And it feels like they're kind of just waiting waiting out these last few games here. Well, they're a team that clearly didn't get the memo that you need goaltending to be a playoff team. <laughs> yes. After what happened in the playoffs last year, I said, if they don't go and solidify that goaltending position, they're going to pay for it. Yeah. Most people assume that they would though. That's, that's what I think mm-hmm. is what's kind of troubling is every single person who watched a single devil's game last year, knew if they just get themselves a goalie, that's a cup contender. So, like, at the beginning of the year, when you're going through all your predictions, you're like, oh, yeah, the Devils, they might win the Metro and this and that. They'll go over their win total and blah, blah, blah. The assumption was they'll get a goalie because everyone knows they have to get a goalie. They didn't until the trade deadline when they were already out of the playoffs at that point. It was insane, insanity what they did this year with the goaltending position. And well, they're paying for it. Uh, that being said, watch the goalies. Absolutely. Goalie Toronto. Tonight. <laughs> now, now that we're sitting here yeah. talking about it. I mean, they do got some new, new guys, right? Like they traded for Jake Allen and Capo Kaka, uh, yeah. Kako Kakadin at the deadline. Uh, we don't know who is going to start yet. Um, uh, but whichever one watch them just put on a show just to, just to spite us tonight, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a recipe of disaster. We talked about goaltending kind of being a weakness in the last game. Jake Allen had like his best game with the Devils yeah. since. Like, it's. I also I have to apologize to Capitals fans, any Cal fans listening, because when we asked, talked about teams going down the stretch, who we thought had the best chance to be in the playoffs. I said Capitals have a pretty decent stretch chance because they have the games in hand as long as they take advantage. They won't lose six straight. Yeah, yeah, not so, not that best. Not, not going to throw any bad vibes of Leafs way by guaranteeing anything for them tonight against the Devils. No, we'll see. We'll see. I think uh, this will be um, interesting to see if we see any lineup changes, though. Like night two of back to back this late in the season. I'll be curious if we see, I don't know, like a guy like Giordano come out of the lineup potentially on night two of a back-to-back, or, you know, does he start to rest some of the players? Does Tavares take a night off potentially? Um, This is about the time where I think if Sheldon is to do some load management, uh, this would be, I guess, the the first game that it would be noticeable and, and, you know, a, a good opportunity for him to do so. And then obviously game 81 or game 82, whichever one he wants to do it. Like those would be the two games that I would look at to give uh, to give some players rest. Me like a, you know, we'll see, we'll see what ends up happening. But that'll be something to kind of watch for a little bit later today. Really quickly, I want to get to a point that uh, maybe has me a little bit excited about why I think the Leafs could have a much better chance at some playoff success this year, and it's because I think the Leafs are better equipped to score goals this season than they have in the past. And it's not, 
you know, just going to be reliant on Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Tavares, and Marner. I think they've got some other guys who can score. The depth is there. And it's not just that they're scoring. It's how these other players are scoring their goals that has me excited. It's tonight when you saw, you know, Matthew Nyes uh, just park himself in front of the net and just get a, a, a backdoor redirect, like basically inside the crease, right? Battling, staking his claim to that to that ice right there in front of the goaltender and getting a, a, a really good opportunity that way. The way Tyler Bertuzzi has gone and, and scored a lot of his goals from in and around the, the crease area. When you look at a lot of these goals that are being scored by Toronto, they're right out in front of the net. Like you, you go and you look at the goal chart this year, they're scoring so much from in and around the net in the slot and inner slot area. And that's where a lot of the goals are scored come playoff time. You know, rebound goals galore, dirty, grind it goals. And the players that they've added this year are far more likely to do that and have been all season. Um, and that kind of has me excited about what the Leafs could potentially do offensively come playoff time. Well, that's it. That's it, right? I look at Bertuzzi's addition, and I think it kind of rubs off on the rest of the team. Look at Matthew Nye's goal tonight. Where was where is that scored? Right in front. When when he came on the scene last year, what we liked about him from the start is he knew exactly where he needed to be to score goals. Right in front of the net. His first goal technically was in the playoffs. Um, and it was right in that I remember it was right in, in the slot area. This team is realizing that's where they need to be to score goals, and mm -hmm. they gotta also have guys put themselves in positions to set them up. And the reason why we've always liked what we see right now with the Matthews, Domi, and Bertuzzi line is because Bertuzzi's parking himself in front of the net there. He's taking a lot of the attention, as you say, and when you look at where he's scoring the goals, he's taking a lot of the attention, and Domi can distribute. Matthews, and guess what? I, I What I like about Austin Matthews this year, and I know people have always said, Ah, this guy's got so many goals, but he doesn't rack up assists. He's also not benefiting because so many teams are so all the teams know that the puck's going to him, but the attention's going to him, and he can get the other guys going. And now teams have to respect that. Teams, I don't think we're respecting that because Matthews wasn't doing it as much in the past. I think this year, look at them, look at the goal in overtime. I don't think anybody expected Austin Matthews to pass it off to Jake McCabe there. No, and I think you know the goaltender was froze for for just half a second. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a really really you know sneaky play for sure to get it to Brody or to get it to McCabe, and the the, the freeze you know is what allowed I think McCabe to score because Nedeljkovic was late getting over, and by getting over late, it left the five hole open for Jake McCabe to score. Yeah. So for sure, you know I think. Matthews, if he can turn into that type of two-way threat, you know, that'll help the rest of his line mate score for sure. Um, but like that guy's gonna score goals th this year. Like he he's playing on a different level. He's healthy, healthy. He was not healthy last year in the playoffs, especially no. that second, uh, that second round. He was dealing with some sort of injury. Um, because he he could barely even skate. Like I remember watching the game when they got eliminated, and I'm like, the guy got the puck at center ice and could have easily broke like he got the puck at center ice and already had probably a step and a half on the defenders. And within three strides, the defenders caught up to him. And he just had no power, no stride uh, at that point. And it wasn't that he was late in a shift. It's just didn't have it. And, and, you know, that was a big reason why the Leafs struggled last year against the Panthers. Matthews didn't score a single goal because he couldn't skate. He couldn't get himself in the position to score. And he couldn't be that power forward uh, down the center ice that they need. If he could stay healthy this year, that clearly is going to be uh, a factor this season uh, in the postseason, like it's been throughout the regular season this year, along with all the other added, you know, um, goal scores that they've got who are going to the net and scoring in many different ways. The depth throughout the lineup is, is key and huge. And the ways in which they're scoring all in front of the net in the dirty areas is, uh, is what I think is going to lead to playoff success. So I, I hopefully I'm right. We'll see. We I think it's also the reason why Sheldon Keith has said, let's make sure he's healthy. Yeah, obviously. 
hundred percent. Even tonight, you know, only played 19 minutes. That's not, that's like two ish, two and a half minutes less than his season average. Like we, we talked about it before. You don't have to hold guys out of games to rest them. Maybe give them a few less shifts or a few minutes off within a game and only have them playing 17, 18, 19 minutes instead of 20, 21, 22, 23 minutes in which we've seen uh, many times this year. So uh, I'm excited, man. We'll see. 65, he scored against Pittsburgh. Can he get 66, 67, 68? I don't know. I think he does score at least one tonight against the Devils. Imagine he scores a hat trick and kind of puts us all on watch uh, as he nears 70. Just needs five more goals with five more games to go. We'll see if he can get it done. Uh, Leafs and Devils tonight will be uh, should be a good one. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more suiting follow the show as well at Locked on Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. Uh, but until then, Leafs, Devils tonight, 7 o'clock at Scotiabank Arena. Go Leafs, go. And until then, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.